Hi, I'm Chashan Bhargav and you're listening to Three Things, the Indian Express news show. In this episode, we talk about what a recent audit tells us about how the MG Narega scheme is being implemented in Jharkhand. We also talk about how a Muslim man travelling with a Hindu woman was forcibly removed from a train by Bajrang Dal members. But first, we talk about COVID-19. India's third wave is continuing to surge right now. And yesterday, the country had recorded over 2,82,000 new cases of COVID-19. In light of this, the Director General of Civil Aviation issued a notice saying that scheduled international commercial passenger flights will remain suspended till the end of next month. But while cases overall are rising, some cities like Mumbai are showing a decline now. This has led many to hope that perhaps this wave will come down faster than the previous ones, like some experts believe. In this segment, we speak to Rupsa Chakraborty, who reports on Health for the Indian Express about how the city of Mumbai is faring right now. Rupsa, Mumbai seems to be showing a downward trend in its COVID-19 cases. How many cases has the city been reporting in the past few days? So, Mumbai witnessed the peak in the third wave on 7th January when Mumbai recorded 2,971 cases with a case positivity rate of 28.9. Since then, it has gradually started decreasing. On Tuesday, Mumbai recorded 6,149 cases with a test positivity rate of 12.18%. So in the last 10 days, there has been a huge drop in test positivity rate and in the daily recording of cases. And just for the benefit of our listeners, test positivity is basically the percentage of positive cases out of a sample. So let's say you take 100 tests and 10 are positive, then the positivity rate is 10. So considering that the positivity rate has gone down, then that would mean that this downward trend of cases is not a result of low testing, right? No, no, no. So we cannot contribute uh, lower testing to lesser number of cases because what happens when cases drops, the testing automatically decreases because there is lower number of active patients and their contact tracing also decreases. So thus, it reflects in the daily testing done in any city. Like for example, for instance, on 7th Jan, when Mumbai recorded the highest number of cases, we had done 72,000 plus testing. Now, on Tuesday, it was 47,700 because the number of active cases has also decreased. So in the last 10 days, the active cases in Mumbai has dropped from 1 lakh to 44,000. So this again shows how the pandemic curve in the third wave is plateauing in Mumbai. And so is Mumbai an outlier in this regard or are we seeing cases fall in other cities as well? So Mumbai being the epicenter in the first and second wave also we have seen that it starts from Mumbai and then it gradually spreads to other cities like Delhi, Bangalore, Kolkata. So now also we are seeing a similar trend where the number of cases is also decreased, is gradually decreasing in Delhi and Kolkata. So in the last 10 days, the number of daily cases, which was around 28,000 in Delhi during its peak, has decreased to decrease to 11,684 on Tuesday, which is a massive drop in daily COVID-19 cases. Similarly, in Kolkata, the cases dropped from around 8,000 in its peak to 2,205 on Tuesday. And when it comes to Mumbai, are we also seeing hospitalizations decreasing in number? Yes, yes. Because as we know, as we've seen in the third wave, most of the, like 90% of the patients have been asymptomatic. Now, as the number of overall total cumulative number of daily cases has decreased, it has also been reflected in the hospitalization rate, which has decreased with a decrease in a daily count of cases. And, you know, like in previous waves, are we then seeing cases increase in rural areas when cases in cities are decreasing? Yes, yes. So there are six districts in Maharashtra which are recording more number of seven-day positivity rate than Mumbai. 
This includes Pune, Thane, Akola, Raigad, Nanded, and Nasik. And Nasik has seven day positivity rate of thirty five point four percent. So it shows clearly that now from the centers like Pune and Mumbai. it is gradually spreading to other districts and it will further spread to rural districts and what are the main concerns with that happening right now with covid cases reaching rural areas so the main problem is that most of these districts are not fully vaccinated or the coverage of vaccine is very less compared to cities like pune or mumbai So in Pune and Mumbai, like for example in Mumbai, the fully vaccinated coverage among the eligible population is around ninety percent. Despite this, we had so much infection rate, right? Because of the high transmissibility of this new variant, Omicron. So now, as it is spreading to the rural district and with lesser coverage of vaccination, it may cause more severity among the patient who already have. comorbidity so that is one concern that the public health department has now and next we talk about how the mg narega scheme is being implemented in jharkhand now the mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act also called narega or mg narega is an act that provides unskilled jobs to millions of people every year according to the act the government is supposed to provide 100 days of guaranteed employment in a year to any rural household or family at minimum wages this act is the one that has ensured that many people living in rural areas who have lost their jobs during covid are at least able to get some income for example the migrant workers who had to return back to their villages in jharkhand but it turns out that many people in the state are actually not being able to benefit from this initiative this is what a recent government audit of narega in the state has found out among other things it reveals that about 75% of those who were supposed to get employment through narega were found to be completely missing from work sites indian express's abhishek angad had accessed and written about this report in the paper and he begins by telling us about the social audit unit that had conducted this audit so we need to understand that this is a system to keep things in checks and balances so social audit unit is part of rural development department and narega is also a unit under rural development department so as soon as the system gets to know get see look there is some fraud going on there then the particular block or particular panchayat is asked about action taken report on that particular scheme or work and then money is being recovered and suspensions or terminations of work happen that way so it is very important because narega has been a a very important tool especially in jharkhand because around 10 lakh people came back in the last 2 years and the act is very clear mentioned the act that how it is a demand based tool for social protection of people who demand some kind of work according to the act these audits are supposed to take place every month this usually involves people like program officers or self help groups or even ngos who visit the work sites and see how the projects are being done they would check whether people are actually being employed whether they are being paid for it and how much money is being spent on each project For this particular audit they visited 29000 work sites spread across more than 1000 panchayats Some of the projects in these sites included the digging of a pond making of roads a cow shed and a well Abhishek says that what the audit revealed was shocking you No know, they found out that 75% of the workers which were supposed to be present as per the muster roll were not there now we need to understand what is a muster roll so it's not just any other attendance sheet so muster rolls are generated online and how does it happen every village has a rozgar sevak and there are panchayat secretaries there are mukhiyas so they all keep a track of who are the people who require daily wage and jobs at their villages and what all the assets that are required to be constructed So for example if a cow shed needs to be made in the village then it can be done through the narega process like after it is decided that a cow shed needs to be made the mukhya of the village will decide what all is needed for it 
and who are the people in the village who want to work who want to be employed so there are a number of people who have shown interest because rozgar sevak go to the village and say ki aapko kaam chahiye ki aap agar kaam chahiye then you can take this job so a demand is generated through rozgar sevaks through the help of mukhyas through panchayat secretaries through the block level whatever and then based on the demand and the situation whatever needs to be constructed a master role is generated online master role meaning an attendance sheet is generated online based on the demand so there are names of the people who will be constructing n number of things or who will be employed in n number of areas so that master role becomes a very important document this master role is part of the public domain anyone can go and check such master roles online and see who are the people that have been employed to work on narega projects and so the master role is what the social audit unit focused on when visiting the work sites in jharkhand so when the team they went to the multiple work sites work site as in around 29000 work site they had visited so when they went there they saw that out of 1.59 lakh workers who were supposed to be present there were not in that only 40000 odd workers were there now this is huge this is huge in terms of the number of workers who are working and the money which were supposed to go to the laborers or the household who had asked for the job or where is the money going because the money is going as a direct benefit transferred to the accounts of these 1.59 lakh workers and it's not a one day affair that they went and audited this this is a three day affair they go to the same spot for at least two or three days the social audit team could not find most of the people whose names were mentioned on the master roll in one example the team found a master roll which was generated for the construction of a well the project was supposed to be ongoing but in that case not only did they not find people on the work site they also found out that the well had already been constructed plus the actual amount spent on the well was half of what was allotted So how is it possible that the master role is on and on half the amount that well has been constructed so either a the person who was constructing that well had constructed on his own means so it means that he used n number of laborers and he may have used some other people who were not part of master role he may have used some of the people who were part of master role that's a matter of investigation he may have used machines to do the work which was supposed to be done by the laborers so this is in clear in contravention to the very basic of the very tenet of the narega act this is because when machines are used people don't get employed which is what the narega scheme is for now in another glaring example abhishek says that the audit team visited a cow shed and when they spoke to its owner he told them that he knew for a fact that people who were on the master roll to build the shed did not do so because he personally knew some of the people because one of them was working for a competitive examination in jamshedpur and another one never turned up in that village but their names were there in the master roll i spoke to the owner and he told me that how it works is ki the person who is giving the job who is trying to make the demand create the demand is someone who is in connivance and these laborers are also the people in the master rolls are also in connivance with those people and what happens is in few days that the direct benefit transfer amount goes to their account and in a meager sum they withdraw the remaining and give to the person who does all this another person that the audit team had spoken to told them that the village mukhya had transferred money into her account and then just asked her to give it back to him abhishek says that these matters should be investigated because it is possible that all this money is being laundered and is going into the wrong hands but besides machines being used and people not being present on the work sites there were other problems too like people were found working whose names were not on the master roll at all there were around 1787 workers who were found worker working there whose names were not there on the master roll so earlier we discussed how people whose names were there in the master roll never worked there now the other finding was ki people whose name were not there in the master roll they were also found for working there essentially it means that somebody is giving them some amount of money on the cost of someone else that someone else's name is being there in the master roll and someone else is working there the audit team told abhishek that what happens in many cases 
is that people who are not on the master roll are employed and made to work twice or thrice the amount one is supposed to in a day. And these people are paid only a day's work, sometimes more, but the project is completed at a much cheaper cost. And the official muster roll, of course, continues to tell a different story at a different cost. Abhishek says that there are other checks and balances in place to stop this from happening. But those were not followed either. Another major important is, okay, once you have generated a muster roll online, but it is mandated in the law that printout of those muster roll will always be there with the people. So those people should also carry muster roll along with them. That was not there. Now there has to be a display board. This mandated in the law that there has to be a display board there near the work site. In many such cases, a board was never there. And there are a lot of other issues. For example, there's delay in labor payment. Of course, we talked about how machines are being used. But one of the major issues that came out was the people not being there. So where is the money going? To whom the money is going? Okay, so Abhishek, since your report came out and was published in the paper, have we heard anything from the government regarding this? So what I have heard from my sources in the government is that the center's RDD secretary, Rural Development Department secretary, had read that article and they had a conference call and told that, you know, there's this report which has been published in the Express and what are your SOPs to deal with such kind of social audit findings? So that they have done. And yesterday there was a virtual uh, video conferencing where they had asked all the DDCs to get on the toes and see and to file an action taken report as per the social audit finding. So that is there. But I just need to mention one important thing. And that is Jharkhand has been a place where social audits are happening in this space. It means that there is, if social audits happen, we report that it means that there is a system of check and balance. It's not that in other states where if we don't hear anything, there is no problem at all. Doesn't mean there is no problem. Right. And you were telling me that there are allegations against some social audit teams as well about how they have become corrupt and are now engaging in extortion tactics. But yeah, I suppose it is good that at least this instrument of checks and balances is still there. But also, Abhishek, are there examples of such discrepancies being reported on in the past as well? Yes, yes, there have been discrepancies in the past too, where uh, these kind of issues have come. But um, the only problem is sometimes the report also don't come to us. The social audit findings, because the government is not very happy or transparent in giving it properly to us, uh, saying that, look, these are social audit findings. Because you know what happened? Even after the social audit report was submitted to various districts and to the government, when I called them, have you taken any action? So it's not that the, the government is very serious about the findings. Because for a state who claims to be the welfare in its score in terms of how migrants are being treated and the state claims that we have done a lot for the migrant, this should be an eye-opener to them because this has been happening for a lot of time. But this so concurrent audit that is still happening and the fact that we also published that story, I think this should be an eye-opener for the Jharkhand government. And in the end, we talk about how two people, a Muslim man and a Hindu woman, were forcibly removed from a train by Bajrang Dal members and handed over to a railway police station in Madhya Pradesh. And the man in question was accused of love jihad. In this segment, Iram Siddiqui, who reports on Madhya Pradesh for the paper, tells us about who these two people were and what happened to them. So these two people that we are talking about are basically residents of Indore. The woman is a teacher. She teaches uh, students of class 11th and 12th, while the man runs a small electronic shop in Mahu in Indore itself. So what had happened was that these two were family friends. The woman belongs from the Jain community, while the man is a Muslim. Right, and these two people had been travelling on a train when Bajrang Dal members confronted them and forcibly removed them from the train. The man was beaten up and then both of them were taken to the police station. What were the Bajrang Dal members saying? So three people who identified themselves as uh, workers of Bajrang Dal dragged these two people out of the train and took to the GRP police station at the Jain railway station because they believed that that man who, according to them, is already married with a kid was trying to commit love jihad. 
Yeah, and we've heard about Love Jihad a fair bit in the past few years. According to those in the right wing, Love Jihad is an alleged internationally funded campaign to convert Hindu women to Islam through marriage. Many believe that Hindu women are lured into marriage, they convert and then the man just leaves them. And there is obviously no proof of this conspiracy, but minority communities are targeted because of it. So in this case also the man is accused like you said of love jihad they are taken to the police station what happens after that right so you know in one of the videos from that incident you can see that the woman is yelling on top of her voice with the policeman sitting inside the chowki she is trying to tell the bajrangal men a first to stop video recording her she is heard in the video saying that why are you making videos and taking pictures of me i am an adult i know what i am doing i am a teacher and i teach children while all of this is unfolding you can see the policeman just sitting out there while one of the bajrangal men later identified as pintu tells that woman that i am not talking to you i am talking to this man and the man who was traveling with that woman is seated there and the police is doing absolutely nothing and they are mere spectators inside the police station now what the police did after the uh, these allegations were levied by the members of bajrangal was they summoned the parents of these two people from indore which is around 65 kilometers away their parents had to come in and clarify to the police and explain their position that we've known this man for over a decade they were family friends and uh, i was later told that there was some wedding in pushkar where they were heading together because they've known each other in fact the woman we are talking about is already married she was married in 2016 her husband works at a private firm and has also known this man they've been friends and they both visit each other's house so there was no way in which this man was trying to allure the woman and take her somewhere for any other intention except for visiting that wedding in pushkar so this was what it was and then after that once the parents clarified this part to the police they recorded the statement of these two people and uh, since there was no offense or nothing whatsoever they were allowed to go but i'm sure the school process took a very long time and uh, once they left that was the end of it okay and did the police do anything about the bajrangdal members who had forcibly dragged these two to the police station and beaten the man up so according to the sp of the grp nivedita gupta her point of view was that we did not register an fir against the members of bajrangdal because we did not receive any complaint and uh, very interestingly according to her they were not aware that this particular man was beaten up or man handled on his way to the police station they only learned about what had transpired from that coach until them reaching the police station was after the video went viral on social media so this was what happened at that point of time now when i spoke to the spokesperson for vhp for malwa prant he told me that uh, while accepting that these were workers of uh, bajrangdal who did that he said that they had learned through reliable sources that uh, a muslim man was trying to commit love jihad and it was only out of concern for the hindu woman who they treat as their own sisters that uh, the workers intervened but then he said you know there was no man handling or beating up of that muslim man it was just that when the bajrangdal men tried to ask him about his identity and why was he traveling with that woman that the man got aggressive which led to the bajrangdal men beating him up on the way to the police station and iram have we seen such incidents happen in the past in madhya pradesh or would you call it a one off incident to answer that chashank we have not seen something as brazen as this particular incident where you see members of the bajrangal barging in to a train coach and dragging people to the police station not as brazen as this one but obviously there have been a very systematic interference in a lot of cases like i remember soon after the anti conversion law was passed a lot of instances that we reported after digging in while immediately it was not apparent that members of the right wing community was involved but once you started questioning you could see their role i would like to cite an example from khargon district i very vividly remember in march last year there's this one popular spot called jam gate where uh, two muslim men were celebrating their birthday with two women they were 20 21 year olds and they were residents of indore basically they were doing all of that when suddenly some members of hindu jagran manch spotted them 
and suddenly they realize that this is something fishy they intervened and according to the members of hindu jagran manch the girl immediately broke down and she said that you know she was kidnapped and brought to jam gate later on when i spoke to the police i realized that their students studying together in the same college one of the a guy it was his birthday and they had come there to celebrate the birthday but what happened after that was after uh, members of hindu jagran manch intervened the police registered a case under anti conversion law and even abduction and so on and so forth and interestingly the complainant were women so when you look at these cases you would say that oh the girl has complained something might have gone wrong but what happens inside the police station is when these members intervene there's a lot of pressure on the parents there's video made and so on and so forth so you cannot say that there's direct interference but once you dig and go deeper into things you realize that a lot of these cases reported are somewhere you find interference of the right wing groups whether it's the hindu jagran manch or the vhp or bajrang dal You are listening to Three Things by the Indian Express. Today's show was written and produced by me, Shashank Bhargav, and was edited and mixed by Suresh Pawar. If you like the show, then do subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts. You can also recommend the show to someone you think will like it. Share it with a friend or someone in your family. It's the best way for people to get to know about us. You can tweet us at Express Podcasts and write to us at podcasts at IndianExpress dot com. 